Yo, 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 you made it. It's your favorite comic on the rise, Melvin Williams, and you are officially tuned into the Comedy Chatter Podcast. You've been searching for a pod that talks all things comedy, as well as kick it with today's nationally touring and headlining comedians, and this is the podcast for you. What's good, good people? How y'all feeling? How's everybody doing? It's your boy, Melvin Williams. Back with the fifth episode. That's right. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate all the love and the support that I'm getting. Uh, yeah, it's starting slow, but everybody you know, told me that it would. All the podcast users and listeners, they said, hey, man, this is a labor of love type thing. You got to go ahead and just continue to be consistent, continue to put that content out there. And the people that are listening, believe me, the folks that are listening are enjoying you. They're coming back. They're hanging out with you, man. They're listening to your insight. Like I said, this this um, podcast is for the up and coming comedians out there that's trying to do their thing and get their hot hustle and their grind on, like myself. So hey, you know, maybe uh, when I get to the 100th episode, they'll throw me a big party and wheel in one of those big cakes. But until then, man, like my boys Jalen and Jacoby say, hey, I'm straight out the trunk right now. I pop the trunk. I get my little items and my little utensils out of there. I set up in my lab. And, hey, I, I, I make this Comedy Chatter podcast thing happen. And I couldn't be prouder. I, I couldn't be happier to be where I am now in terms of uh, getting this podcast together. Like I said, I've had some amazing guests, amazing guests so far, man. Uh, last Last episode was none other than... The Daily Shows and uh, Father Figure's own Roy Wood Jr., man. He's uh, turned out to be a really, really stand-up guy, man. A really cool dude. I've uh, had a chance to chill out with him, you know, just kind of like, you know, you know, not not doing comedy things, just kind of like relaxing. And, you know, I went to the Toronto, um, you know, shot up to the Toronto Just for Laughs. And this dude treated me like a family member, man. He, you know, got me into some shows. And I wasn't doing any performing or anything, man. I was just literally there. As like a guest of Roy Wood Jr., man. So he's a cool dude, and I appreciate him for all that, man. Thank you so much, Roy Wood, and I appreciate everything that you did for me, man. And, hey, that's what the comedy game is about, man, just kind of networking and trying to, you know, find guys that are just cool. And if you heard his uh, interview, man, you you realize what kind of a stand-up guy he is and how hard he's been grinding, you know, doing this stand-up comedy thing. And so... Hey man, he everything that he's getting right now, believe me, he deserves it. That's how that's how that's how uh that's how big and how how hard his grind has been. He's been just definitely getting it in. So thank you very much, Roy Wood. Y'all know how I start this thing off, man. I do my shout outs. Uh the one and only Mr. Roger, Roger Feeney from uh the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. He's the guy that allowed me um, you know, I had the had the idea and the brain, um, the brain power kind of came to me one day, and I said, hey, you know what, I want to do a podcast, but how would I, you know, get guests? I knew that uh, my man Roger booked comedians every, you know, every week to come up to the Inland Comedy Showcase to perform and headline. I said, hey, why don't I just, you know, ask him for access to them, you know what I'm saying, and I'll, you know, record them right in the green room, so that's what I do. He's been doing that. That's exactly the way I've been getting my guests. Shout out. Thank you so much, Roger. Without you, this thing wouldn't be a go. And definitely to my man, Mr. David Pittman, my equipment, my sound guy, the guy that showed me uh, all the ropes in terms of how to uh, get all my, you know, technical and, you know, all the IT stuff together, you know, for this uh, podcast. I appreciate him wholeheartedly as well for helping me bring this thing together. So thank you guys. Shout out to both of y'all. Back in the day sponsor. Oh, I got a good one this time. I got a good one. So. Uh, back in the day sponsor, Carl Kanai Jeans. Carl Kanai Wear. Hey, if anybody, if anybody, there's my time that came up with me, like I said, right, right around 20 years ago, we was in high school, man. Hey, if anybody was around there with me, then y'all know that Carl Kanai was the absolute ish. You feel me? I'm talking about in terms of gear, like if you if you didn't have any Carl Kanai's, like people, something was wrong with you. You know what I mean? Like you... Like people was trying their best. Oh, I want some crocodile. And they were, you know, expensive for the time. You know how, like, that true religion and all that is right now? Like, hey, that's exactly. I know, you know, true religion might be a little play. I might be playing myself by saying that. But at one time, like, recently, true religion was the shit, right? Well, hey, that was Carl Kanai back in the day, in my day in high school. And, hey, man, it was, it was, 
that was it. You had a car. Now, people used to have the whole outfits on. Like, I think he, you know, dabbled and got some shoes at one point. So people had the whole fits on. But, yes, Carl Kanai jeans and Carl Kanai wear was it. Before FUBU, before all that, it was you know, little dude Carl Kanai. He came out and it was hot. So, hey, I had to go ahead and pay homage to Carl Kanai 20 years ago. I'm sure if he was around today, if his stuff was around today, he would definitely be a sponsor of the Comedy Chatter podcast. I'd have to make that happen. Oh uh, man, so what we uh what can we get into uh this go around with the Comedy Chatter podcast? Uh the BET Awards, the BET Hip Hop Awards came on recently. Now, I don't watch the BET Hip Hop Awards. I'm gonna keep it real. I don't watch because, you know, most of the cats they have on there nowadays are just like they're aliens to me. Like I don't I don't <laughs> I don't know any of them. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm just so old school that, you know, they got like little, little, little Ayachi and little Bootsy and all these little. I'm like, I don't, I don't know none of them. You know what I'm saying? I'd be much, I'd be much more inclined to watch the uh, VH1 uh, honors. You ever seen that where they do the VH1 honors and they do the old school rappers and they come out and people pay homage like that? That I'd probably be able to watch that, but. So yeah, in terms of the hip hop awards, like whenever when they come on and everybody turns them on and they Facebook in the bottom, I was like, I ain't watching that shit. But I do, however, enjoy the ciphers. Now the ciphers are just like these little kind of um, you know segments that they do pre recorded. They're not they're live, but the artists kind of you know do their thing and they kind of like rap to a freestyle. They 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 say it's freestyle, but you can you can tell most of the raps are you know already written and everything. But anyway, yeah, the ciphers are hype because they do like a group of people and the guys and ladies get on there and they do their little flow and they got a beat going. But, you know, most of, you know, I usually go to YouTube, you know, a few days later after I hear which ones were dope and I go check them out. But the only, the, the, the main one that I heard this go around this year was your boy Eminem. Detroit stand up, eight miles on Mr. Eminem. Everybody was talking about it on, on social media. Everybody was talking. He even had people on the news talking about it. Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, damn, what did M say? So I had to go check it out. And then I, you know, found out that uh, he kind of went in on, you know, uh, none other than President Trump. He had some real harsh, angry words for him. And, um, you know, like I said, it was the cipher is usually a rap. Like, and I listened to M's. His wasn't really a rap, if you think about it. It was more of like a spoken word, like a poetry. Like, like he would have definitely got like, you know, like snaps at the at the point. If he did like this, like, you know, those snaps at the end of a spoken word, like he definitely would have got those. Like, is he, like, it, 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 it was, it was turned up. His, 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 um, you know, like a little, you know, performance was tight. He said some really, really, what I liked about it was that he went all the way in. He didn't like half ass it. He didn't. He didn't like, you know, oh, yeah, well, you know, both sides. You know, that's kind of how they, how a lot of um, artists or a lot of people that have, like, sponsors and, you know, money and all that stuff, they try to, like, go, you know, both, you know, straddle the fence, go both sides. Him didn't do that. He basically, I mean, I think the end of his shit, he was like, fuck Trump. So, you know, that's not, you know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not, that's picking a side right there. He, he wasn't straddling the fence. And yeah, so he said some real, you know, emotional stuff, and he just kind of let everybody know. I Man, he even like laid a gauntlet out for his fans. You know, Eminem, Eminem's got you know millions of fans, and he told him he said, "Hey, for my fans that's like you know straddling the fence, y'all don't know how to go. Like, you want to be my fan, and you you fucks with Trump." He's like, "Hey, y'all, y'all go on his side. Like, don't fuck with me no more." I, so I thought that was powerful, man. I real I really did. Uh, and so that was the only, you know, I think, I guess, bright spot in terms of the BET cipher. Uh, most of the cats, you know, like I was you know, saying, I looked at a couple of the other ones on YouTube and didn't know any of them. And I was kind of like, ah, oh, you know, whatever. I think, I think the beat that DJ Premier was dropping for most of them was kind of tight. I mean, it was a good beat for them to flow off of. But, yeah, a lot of them were just uh, underwhelming. But M's, man, I, I had to give them props for just kind of stepping up. In a time where people, you know, just, you know, don't want to step up, don't want to pick a side, you know what I'm saying? You're looking at the NFL and you see certain guys that are like, yeah, I'm, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm stepping up. I'm, I'm doing something that's bigger than me and, you know, I want to be on the right side of history. And then you see some that are like, ah, you know, I'm going to straddle this fence because I have, you know, a wife and kids and I got, you know, family to feed and I want my, you know, NFL job. 
And you know, I can understand that. You know, I you know I, I can't be a I I can't be a man to sit back and say you know what the people should be doing. I'll never do that. But like I said, I respect Eminem for saying, "Hey, I don't care about you know this rap game right now. I don't care about money. I don't care about I don't care about what my you know what I'm saying? My, his record label probably could have went in on him. Like, man, you can't be talking about the president like that. Hey, on that cipher, Eminem didn't care about shit else but letting the world know. And in, in a lot of ways, Trump, no, because you know Trump's seen it. It's hilarious, though, how he hasn't fired back yet. You know, Trump got them Twitter fingers, and I can't believe, like, President Trump ain't fired back yet at Eminem. He fired back at everybody else. Jamel Hill say some shit. On ESPN, he fired back. NFL people say something like, unless he has, and I haven't heard it, but I, I definitely haven't heard him say anything back to him. So um, I definitely had to, you know, chat about that in terms of uh, how how I just respect it more so than anything. And I'm not a huge M fan to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, you know, came up in Michigan too. Like I know a whole lot of people want to want to you know bust me in my head for that, but I'm not a huge Eminem fan. But he did uh, earn some points for me for stepping up, you know, and not, you know, straddling the fence with, with that uh, with that cipher and not giving a damn about what people was going to say. You know, this is like, hey, I'm, this, is, this is how I do. And, you know, that you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of instances, that's how, com- you know, the good comedians are. Think about, you know, your man Chris Rock. Think about your man Dave Chappelle. You know, I wouldn't necessarily call those guys political, but, you know, you know shit, they, they, they take a stand when they do some of those comedy bits man shit they 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 coming all the way with it you know what i'm saying like my man chris rock said recently i think i saw something where he said we the last people comedians are the last people that actually can say whatever the fuck they want you know what i mean like we do it in the you know in in the vein of comedy like, oh you know i'm a comedian i'm i'm joking but hey we still can say whatever the hell we want it's our show you paid to come see us bam you know what i'm saying so so that, that that's got that, that's got to be respected. That definitely has to be respected. This comedy chatter podcast, like I said, it's been a labor of love to me, man. I was uh blessed, like I said, you're gonna hear me drop <laughs> Roy Woods' name a million times just because I was so blessed and so uh you know geeked up and hype about having him do the podcast. Like you know, the last episode when he let me sit down and get the interview, I was I was hyped. So uh, in doing the interview with him. I start to tell myself, man, like what, you know, what other uh, guys, you know, what other, you know, comedians uh, would be just, you know, an amazing, uh, would make amazing interviews. Like what other comedians uh, could I, you know, probably get access to? What other comedians would give me, you know, uh, a good interview and just would be, this would be like a dream interview for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like for instance, if I got to do, I'm right off the bat, I can think of Jamie Foxx. Like Jamie Foxx, man. Like every time I see him on TV, I think I saw him today on a, uh, you know, first take. Uh, you know, he was at the ESPN studios today, and man, it, his energy and just kind of his, you know, you are, first of all, his voice is already like you know when you hear him, you know, you know what I'm saying. I got an audio podcast, so you know what I'm saying. You're not gonna see. So as soon as you hear Jamie's voice, you know that's him. You know, he's got a distinct voice, a la Chris Rock, a la. You know, um, I guess Chappelle, you know, maybe has a, you know, a distinct voice as well. Um, you think about uh, Gilbert Godfrey. As a matter of fact, I can't wait to go see uh, his um, new documentary that's about to drop. Uh, you know, comedy legend Gilbert Godfrey. He's doing this uh, documentary where there is basically going to be, you know, more of an um, ode to who he really is as opposed to just his comedic um, persona. But um, getting back to voices, like, yeah, Gilbert Godfrey's voice, you know, oh, my goodness, I can't believe, you know what I'm saying, that voice, everybody knows him from that voice, all the way back to, you know, Beverly Hills Cop 2 when he plays Sidney Bernstein, you know what I mean? Like, but, so, you know, that, that, that that's good for a podcast like mine, it's an audio podcast, because you know the guy's voice, but, um... But yeah, I you know Jamie man, it, he would just be unbelievable to uh, interview. His energy is always turned up, and uh, you know I'm a big fan. You know I'm a, I've been a fan ever since. Uh, not necessarily in Living Color because uh, I was more of a you know before Jamie got there, that was when I was hooked in Living Color. By the time Jamie got there, a lot of the stars that I was hooked on and kind of left. But he did his thing too. He got a couple, he had some you know skits on there. But I became a huge fan uh, after his. Um, Straight from the foxhole, 
that he had recorded in San Diego, his HBO special. It was like it, it was something like I hadn't seen in a while in terms of comedy specials. I mean, the, the guy got up there and killed for about an hour. Um, you know, he had the little blue and black suit on. I was like, damn, I got to get me a blue, blue, blue and black suit like that. And you know what I'm saying? And he went up there and he just like killed the crowd. And then he sang at the end. And that was when I knew, hey, yeah, this dude is next. Like this dude is is on deck to be like, you know, the next guy. And um, that's exactly what happened, man. We all, you know, all saw that he went on to become, uh, you know, not only a great stand up, but he you know, recorded some songs and. You know, won an Oscar. Like this, this dude is amazing. So I think he would be the quintessential, like, like just just a straight up dream interview for this podcast. And so uh, I would love to get him. I, I, hey, after I got Roy Wood, man, I, I just I just know that there's more cool. There are more cool, you know, comics and more cool people out there that have actually finally made you know actually made it that will still give you know a, a little podcast, you know, the little engine that could podcast that I have a chance. In terms of giving me an interview, I don't need long. I don't need long, Jamie. You know, fifteen, twenty minutes. You know what I'm saying? I can make, I can make it happen from there. So you know, hopefully, hopefully he's listening. To what, I'm sure he's not. <laughs> oh man! Speaking of perverts, any perverts in here? Any perverts? <laughs> hey, you see him? I'm being honest. My hand up. <laughs> hey, the older you get, man, I'm telling you, you just be perfect. You're right, sir. Hey, I perv off of shit nowadays, man. Yes. Like titties, like oh my god! Like, aren't they the best, sir? Like this is the best thing ever, right? Just tantalizing, vivacious, oh, just succulent, right? Oh, like titties make everything better too, don't they? Like titties just make everything better. Tell the truth. Yeah, they make everything better. Like okay, we're having a good time right now. You guys are drinking, everything's good. This show's going okay, right? Hey, but yeah, you better believe if every lady in here just took them titties out right now, this motherfucker go to another level, one. <laughs> You'll see dudes just walking around for no reason, like, hmm, you need anything? You need anything? Oh. Shit. Damn right, man. Titties make everything better. I'm sorry. I, I, that's the way I am. I'm sorry. Yeah, man, I'm getting older, like I said, man. Just turned 40, man. Yes, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, man. Why did it, hey, why didn't anybody tell me? Fuck. Shit, this is rough. 40 is rough, man. Yes, and when you get older, you got, I'm getting older, so that means I'm hanging with older people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I'm hanging with older folks. Like, it's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's older. I start realizing different things about older people, too. Yeah. Certain things is different, like with younger folks. Like, younger folks, hey, everybody, anytime younger people pay for stuff, what they pay, what they use, a debit card, right? Debit card. I'll give it, put your debit card. Just swipe the debit card. Chip or swipe. Chip or swipe. Chip swipe. Uh, that's young people, you right? No matter what it is, a dollar seventy-three, right? Them motherfuckers just using their debit card. Am I right? Hey, not old people. Hey, I love old women. Them old women got that goddamn coin purse, you know what I'm talking about? They snap at the top. And they got every fucking coin imaginable in it. You know I mean? I'm talking about pennies, nickels, dimes. Hey, you get a good one. She got a motherfucking silver dollar in there. Like, hey, where did you get this from, Mildred? This is a silver dollar. This, this is a hundred years old, Mildred. Where'd you get this? She always got a story. Oh, I got that from Ulysses S. Grant. Baby. You know you did you did. Now you're lying, Mildred. Now you're lying. Comedy Chatter Podcast. Thank you for coming out, Mr. Mike Green. That's who I'm interviewing today. How you doing today, sir? I'm very well. How are you? Doing very well. Doing very well. First of all, I always start by thanking you guys for coming. I know I reached out to you on Facebook. Everything is so uh, you know informal nowadays in terms of that, but I had no other way to get to you. But I knew you were being going to be at the Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase this weekend, so I reach out. I say, hey, can you uh, give me fifteen or twenty, maybe uh, in between shows? He says, uh, you know, no problem, so I appreciate you for doing that. Thank you very much. No problem. Not a problem at all. Go all on. right, so, like, as I just told you, we spoke a little bit out uh, or after the show. First of all, you said the show, you just finished up. The show was pretty good, the uh, last one you just did. Yeah, it was enjoyable. It was good, nice. Good, nice good, enough. Good, good, good. I know we got a crazy crowd in going on right now with the U of M uh, State game. Yes, Michigan, Michigan State tomorrow night, mm-hmm. so 
so we're expecting low numbers tomorrow, but there was a decent show just now, and uh, they were there was a couple Spartans so decided <laughs> they wanted to be heard yes. in the audience. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. They always uh, they always try to come and make their mark. It's good the game is here though. It's good the game is here this week and not uh, right. there because uh, they tend to try to rob us at the other places. So that's right. I've yeah. seen it happen. Yes, indeed. All right. So I always start my uh, podcast off like this. Uh, you know, I'm a huge basketball fan. Not sure if you're all sh- sure if you are, but I always start my uh, podcast off with this question. Just kind of uh, you take it anywhere you want. Uh, so if you had to pick, we got Kobe Bryant, we got Michael Jordan, we got LeBron James. If you had to pick, and like I said, I know you're not. I don't know, know if you're a hoop fan at all, but you take that anywhere you want to take it. Best ever. It, yeah, just, yeah, Michael best Jordan, ever. hands down, clearly by far, not even close. He was the best ever. Exactly, exactly. I think so too. But I always have to ask people. We got, we got, all, we got the new people he nowadays. The game. He completely changed the game. The rest of these guys are just trying to emulate. What he was exactly, exactly. They're trying to you know get get a higher number than his, right? I think that's why Kobe picked number twenty four, right? You know, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So, uh, do me a favor and tell me about um, like uh, I, I don't know necessarily want to say your start, but I see that you uh, came from a uh, Roseville. Is that where you? Uh, is yeah. that where you grew up? You did research, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I so, grew so up in Roseville. Is that where you started comedy or? Uh, no, actually, at that point, I had uh, I had moved out. I was probably living in Sterling Heights, but I've lived all over the suburbs of Detroit. Okay, and, um, okay. I started doing comedy at Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle. In all right, Ridley's. October of 1986. All right, we were talking about that at Ridley's earlier. Yep, good room, good room. It's a good room, yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Good. So, uh, so is that kind of a uh, Mark Ridley's? Would you kind of say that that was the place where you kind of like found uh, honed your craft and kind of found? Yeah, there and there was another club at the time called Chaplin's Comedy Club, which started Ooh. just maybe a year or two after, <laughs> and uh, it was on the east side. That was closer to where I live, and uh, so between those two, Joey's in Livonia here in Ann Arbor, Ooh. Toledo and Lansing. Those were where I got my. There was two clubs, one in Toledo and one in Lansing, and that's where I got my. Uh, start. That's where I built my act. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good. Now, now, uh, this is a funny question. At least it'd be funny to me. Most drunk crowd. Most drunk crowd. U of M. Uh, U of M versus uh, state crowd that you just experienced, or one of those uh, Las Vegas showrooms that you've done. Drunkest crowd. The, the drunkest crowd. <laughs> Man, that's. Uh, I don't. Um, you know up. In the UP, mm-hmm. they, they do a lot of drinking up there. Uh-oh. So, so I would so, say so they have to get they have to come into the play. Yeah, their motto is like we only drink during during the cold months, which is like <laughs> eleven months up there. So yeah, Upper yeah, Peninsula um, definitely. Okay, I would say in the UP they they get pretty drunk up there. Maybe at like a casino up there or something. Okay, I, you know mostly it's drunk individuals. Usually yeah, so not necessarily full crowds. Right, right. Okay, yeah. drunk individuals. So what's the craziest thing that's probably happened in one of the one of the uh, Dude, your audiences? That is, that's a ridiculously difficult question. Okay. But I will tell you this. Okay, I got a couple stories <laughs> that I can tell you. Mm-hmm. First of all, uh, I was doing a show in Battle Creek, Michigan, at a Creek? nudist Creek? colony. All right. Oh, nudist colony. Nudist colony <laughs> called Turtle Creek Resort or something like that. Okay. And um, a guy was laughing so hard. Apparently, Uh-oh. he fell over and and cracked his head. It was a cement floor. Cracked his head oh, open goodness. on a cement floor, and so they um they had to call an ambulance and they got him out. They put clothes on him because he yeah. you know because he was naked. <laughs> so they I remember they put Dale Earnhardt pajamas on him, and somebody at some point wanted to cut the sleeve of his Dale Earnhardt pajamas. And he said, do not cut my Earnhardt's. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a voice. He's got a voice. Okay. Uh, and, and so that was one. Mm-hmm. And then now another time I had somebody fall out. I was doing a show in Sarnia, Canada. Sarnia. At, okay. at a strip bar. It was a strip bar upstairs, and I was doing comedy downstairs. Oh, Lord. And the girl, one of the strippers, was upstairs. Somebody ran down and said, hey, Bunny or Taffy Melons or whatever her name is, <laughs> is having a seizure. Oh, and she's completely naked. So the uh, ambulance came in, got her, you know, everybody left the room, first of all. The other comedians, the bartender, the audience, everybody. I was the only person on stage, not a soul in the room, because everybody else wanted to watch Bunny have a, a wow. seizure naked. <laughs> um, so so I tell this story. So, so what are the odds that 
the two times in 32 years that somebody fell out during my show, what are the odds that both of them were completely naked? Oh, what my goodness, odds? yes. Yeah, only, only, That's a weird would, you say, would you say Battle Creek and uh, Sarcania? Sarnia. Sarnia. Sarnia, Canada. Wow, unbelievable. Yes, that, what are the odds? You're right about that. Okay, so um, I've seen you've uh, done some uh, festivals as well. I see that you kind of like, you know, made your bones in some festivals. How do you uh, feel about uh, comedy festivals today? Like, are there any that you kind of live by? Like, oh, man, you got to go well, to Red Clay. You got to go to... The reason, that, um, the reason that I'm able to get the money that I get is because of the festivals. I'm very Ooh. glad I did them because there's a... You know, I won, I won like three different ones. Yeah, I yeah. fifth in Boston. I won Las Vegas. I won New York. And I won the... Laugh Fest, the Clean Comedy Showcase at Gilda's Laugh Fest. Gilda's in Grand Rapids, okay. We've done and uh, so by winning those, because I don't care about my resume, but when you're doing corporate shows, oh, they love okay. resumes. We're going to get That's, into corporate too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the good thing about, you know, doing corporates is, because um, clubs don't really care, I don't think about resumes, okay. I don't think, um, you know, I don't think fundraisers care about resumes. Mm-hmm. But when you do corporate shows, for some reason, they're all about resumes because that's how they run their business. Okay. So, you know, having those things, those things on my resume have let me um, ask for more money than I, than I would ordinarily get. Okay, so those uh, festivals help so that's help why out. I like festivals. And that's right? why you dig them. I understand. Yeah. I and understand it's, and totally. It, it hones your short sets, you know. I mean, if you want to do a TV set, it's seven minutes. Most of the festivals let you do seven minutes. So mm-hmm. it lets you tighten up your, your short sets. Okay, okay. So, yeah, like I mentioned, we're going to get into car. I see that you do a lot of uh, corporate work. Is that something that kind of, uh, do you do more of that than clubs, or is it the same amount? Or No, I try to do as much corporate work as I can, because I okay. can do one show, you know, make two grand, 1500 Oh, okay, so they pay very one well. one show and okay. fly back, you know. Okay. I prefer that over, I mean, not nothing against Roger. I mean, I've worked yeah. for Ann Arbor forever, and yeah, 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 yeah. I, I come in and do five shows here, and, Make about what I'd make to do a corporate show. Oh, you know, okay. So, so yeah, I get that. Then, so I'd much rather just fly out to a show and fly back. And then a lot of those too are just kind of like where you're doing them like during the daytime. You don't have to do the whole They're night life. Night. Oh, most, they are. Yeah, okay. most of them are, are like in a big conference hall, and you mm-hmm. know, and there's opening acts and activities okay. for you and stuff. So, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha, and when gotcha. it's real bad, if it looks bad, I'll bring an opener. You know, somebody who can do five minutes and take the bullet in front of me and gotcha. pay him okay. 200 bucks to, to you know, introduce me. <laughs> and take, like you said, take the yeah, bullet. Take the bullet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got you. All right, so uh, I think I mentioned this to you um, before we came in. Uh, my last episode was with uh, the great Roy Wood Jr. from The Daily Show. Sure, uh, he talked, uh, he and I had a really good interview, but... Um, and we got a little bit philosophical, and uh, I'm going to start asking this uh, question to a lot of people because he just kind of brought it up. But how do you feel about the state of um, stand-up today? Like, in terms of, um, like, all the internet stuff that's going on, and everybody's like, you know, the skits and this, that, and the other. So he was just basically kind of saying, hey, man, you know, you keep on messing around the way we're going now. It'll yeah. be tough to find a place yeah. to tell a joke. I agree. Say. It's and I didn't think about that. I mean, a lot of it's killing comedy. I know I've seen my own jokes show up on memes. Yeah. I've seen my punchlines, people put them on memes, and all of a sudden they feel like just because they see you at a club or whatever, they can take your joke and put it on the internet. And then and, people think you stole it. Like, I've right. seen that well, meme. I, trust me, I've had other comedians do my jokes that, that uh, in, you know, and then do, uh, what's his name, uh, the Hispanic guy, um, Fluffy. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, um, Iglesias. Yeah, he mm-hmm. does He does a version of driving on the passenger side when you're drinking and driving. Wow. Which I did that in 2000 on the Muscular Dystrophy Telethon, mm-hmm. and he did it like two years ago on some, on some uh, yeah. uh, uh, what is it, comedy channel mm-hmm. show. Like on probably some of the internet comedy that they, 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 no, they like switched. Comedy Central. But, oh. and, and I could never figure out, I could never figure out when we worked together, because I don't know him, and mm-hmm. I, I was pretty sure we hadn't worked together. But a few years ago, I was looking for a clip from um, the comedy festival I did in Boston, the Boston Comedy Festival. And when I looked for it, I realized there was an album out that they had put out that year when oh. they had recorded the entire comedy festival. And uh, surprisingly enough, he was on that comedy festival. I didn't know it. There you he go. He didn't make it to the finals or else I'd have seen him, but, uh, and I did. But regardless, he, um, you know, I'm pretty sure... And I'd, I'd tell him right to his face that it's my joke, and yeah. that I think he stole it. Yeah. I don't know how he stole it, but yeah. it's a pretty original thought, in my opinion, because I made the mistake 
uh, organically one night on stage where I rolled the window down on the wrong side and somebody <laughs> said, hey, that's the wrong side. <laughs> and then that's when I wrote the joke. That's I where you like, got I it I drive from. on the passenger side when I'm drinking and driving. And so I know where I wrote it and I don't know Man. if he could do the same thing. I'm exactly. Sure he could. Yeah, like you said, it's a pretty original uh, thought. Yeah. It's happened to you. I yeah. think, but who knows? Maybe it's, maybe it's parallel development. That's, That's what's scary about original. the whole, uh, scary about that uh, state of that. But like you said, it goes back to my question. Mm-hmm. You know, the worst part about it is that you kind of like, you know, say, hey, man, yeah. he did it. And, you know, two years ago, he was on Comedy Century. You were at the right. telethon. I'm very So now everybody's too. thinking, like, oh, I, he did that joke. I was, I was, um, they wanted me to do a TV show there was some TV show and they wanted to send me a video I think it was Laughs that Laughs show that was on Fox mm-hmm, they were like mm-hmm. hey send us a video mm-hmm. and I sent him a video and he's like don't you have anything more recent online and I go no I do not because mm-hmm. I don't put my new jokes online exactly I'm, I'm, I'm traveling hell I'm traveling put them online yeah they're, like they're, I'm, they're I'm, I'm act, this is part of my set that I'm traveling so I'm around like, the country if, if my stuff that I have online isn't enough to get me on TV then you know then you can come to my house or I'll send you <laughs> I'll send you a video or something you know but yeah yeah yeah, but yeah. Now I mentioned Vegas earlier. Let's get back to that. How uh, was uh, working in uh, Vegas? I've always thought that that Amazing. was interesting. It was, yeah. um, you know, as a kid, my, I was a poor kid, and my dad, you know, his big goal in life was to get to go to Vegas. He mm-hmm. always wanted to go to Vegas. That yeah. was just like, it was yeah. something that you, you know, he, he aspired to, he wanted to go, and uh, he liked to gamble, and <laughs> he always wanted to go. At one point before my dad died, we went. We went to Vegas, and... Uh, and uh, gambling. Were you doing stuff comedy? Like that. You were I was doing not. Comedy? It was not. Okay. But um, w- w- but um, I did I did start doing comedy around that time. He never got to see me do comedy in Vegas. But when I got off the plane the first time, and you know you get out of the cab, and your name is on one of those gigantic signs yes. on the strip in Vegas. I would have loved for him to see that. It's yeah. a pretty pretty cool feeling. Like yeah. uh, I'll never forget it. It's yeah. to me. You know, because I know I know what it would have meant to my dad. I mm-hmm. know it would have been a big deal to him, mm-hmm. and so um, it was a big deal to me. Yeah, yeah, it definitely. One of my favorite achievements, one of my crowning achievements. Yeah, I, I figured it. I figured much. I uh, got a chance to before I even started you know, doing comedy. I got a chance to see George Wallace's show when he was still doing it over there, at Tropicana. Yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. like packed. On, I was like, man, anybody doing this room is just like you're in heaven. Yeah, there's you know a video saying? online. There's a, a video online of me from Las Vegas TV at the Tropicana. Okay. They filmed it, and uh, it was at the Laugh Stop, Funny Stop, Laugh Stop. It's called, I think. Okay. At um, at the Tropicana, and uh, and it's it's one of the, my favorite sets that okay. I've ever had. I gotta check it out. TV. Gotta check. Yeah, it out. if you look, I think you might have to Google search um, Mike Green comedian. Uh, um, what is it? What do I have it labeled as? Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, Tropicana. Sure. I was Blue, about to Blue say, Canada. yeah, but I'll probably right find it. Yeah. yeah, I'll probably get a chance to yeah, find it. It's a very colorful background. You'll see it. It's it's one of my favorite sets I ever had. Yeah. It, it just every joke worked. And it okay. Was, yeah. So, yeah, you're on fire on that one. Yeah, yeah I definitely got to check that out. It's hilarious. Now we got... Uh, Mike Tyson and <laughs> doing Vegas shows now. So I'm like, yes, he's doing Ve- Mike Tyson of all people. That's why anybody just done Vegas. So like, yeah, let me get some actual yeah. comedic insight on how he's uh, doing America's Vegas. Got talent, guys. Really- exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So um, I saw that you, um, you know, doing some of my research that you worked with uh, Seinfeld, worked with Ellen. Yeah. How, how was uh, uh, Seinfeld? He's one of my uh, guys. I enjoy him a lot. Did you see? This? I worked. I worked with Jerry Seinfeld right. Um, okay, so his show was a replacement show. Ooh. So another show got canceled. I don't think and I knew that. He had only, I want to say he had six episodes on his first um, season. Mm-hmm. It was a replacement show. So yeah, yeah, replacing yeah. another show. He came in, he was booked to Chaplin's, the aforementioned Chaplin's yeah. that was on the east yeah. side of Detroit. Mm-hmm. He was um, booked there, and I was the MC. And so the owner had me driving him to and from the hotel because I was the MC. Mm-hmm. So I was driving. And at one night he said, um, would you mind buying me uh, some condoms? I met a girl. Who <laughs> so I was like, oh, yes, this is, what, on, this is why I do this podcast. Uh, like, story, stories and like so, this. <laughs> so what's funny is, what's funny is, he said, I remember him saying, because if I buy them, I'm Jerry Seinfeld. Buying <laughs> if you buy them, you're just some guy buying condoms. <laughs> so I was like, right. Hey, that's hilarious. Cause that's his, that's his humor too. Yeah, was, yeah. Hilarious. Have you seen the special yet? The Netflix special? Uh, no. I, oh yeah, where he's got all the notes. Yeah. Yeah, that whole street in yeah. New York line with yeah. his notes. Unbelievable. Is impressive. Unbelievable. Yeah. I just got a chance to check it out. Yeah, just, it's pretty I think cool. It just it's dropped pretty it cool, recently. Yeah. And I like the way he um, talked about his 
how we got started. And Upbringing. Stuff. It's, it's yeah. pretty cool. Really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, all we know is, like you said just a minute ago with that joke, Jerry Seinfeld, but it was great to right. see him coming I up. I could probably and, tell you that joke and not tell you who said it. You and know. you still know yep. who said yep. it. Yeah, you know. It's, it's very him-ish. Unbelievable. Yeah, definitely. I our, worked with Ellen. I got uh, fired by Ellen DeGeneres. Wow, okay. In Ann Arbor. When Kirk, in Ann Arbor. When Kirkland Teeple used to... Um, Used to own the club. Uh, she, I, I introduced her. I was the MC, and I introduced her. I said, the, "You've seen her on HBO. This next chick, super famous. Here she is, Ellen DeGeneres." Mm-hmm. She did her whole set. The first thing she did when she got off stage was come right to me and ask me, "Did you call me a chick?" Oh and shit! And I was like, "Yeah, but I didn't mean anything by it. You know, I just mm-hmm. meant." Yeah, this next, meant, you know, like, you know, it was, it was mm-hmm. 1989. Exactly. Call, call people chicks. You know? Exactly. He was like, no, she said, nobody calls me a chick. And she went over to Kirkland, and Kirkland came over and said, Mike, I gotta let you go. You gotta go home. Holy she doesn't want to show shit. Anymore. So, um, that was it. So Holy I didn't shit. Work for, I didn't work for her. <laughs> like I said, that's I did run into her again because I worked for her in Merrillville, Indiana at um, the Stardome in Merrillville. Did, did she and, rem- uh, didn't remember? She didn't remember me. Of course at all. not. And she I just, like, she remembered you as the guy that did yeah. this call and shit. Yeah, she didn't even remember. Oh, man, that's that crazy. Like, yeah. Awesome story, though. That one and the Seinfeld one. Okay, well, I didn't want to, definitely didn't want, didn't want to take up too much of your time. So I'll just kind of end it with uh, finding out who you're fanning on right now. Just kind of guys that you're interested in right now. Any up-and-comers or just anybody that you're kind of like, you know, keeping an eye on and say, hey, these okay, guys are pretty let's see. I'm gonna name. I'm going to name somebody who's already um, had success and somebody who's new. Okay. I'll name my two favorites. Okay, so Ian Bag. Who I okay. just saw for the first time. I don't know if you know Ian Bag. No. Man, I can't believe how funny he is. I, okay. I hadn't seen him before because I'm a headliner and he's a headliner, so you don't mm-hmm. get to see him. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I happened to see his show the like uh, last week or the week before. Where and, was it? Yeah, at the Comedy Castle. Oh, really? Oak, and okay. He, he crushes and he really makes me laugh. I laughed out loud ten times <laughs> okay. and I don't laugh anymore. I've and seen yes. a lot of comics. Yes, in terms of comics, it's hard to make us laugh. He yeah. made me laugh. And um, there's there's a new girl and um, she's not uh, a chick. No, a new, girl, a new young lady who is um, uh, at at the comedy castle as well, and she's um, her name is Luna. I don't know if you know. Okay, her. no, no. And uh, she, check her out. she does this joke that just for it's it's real dirty and stuff, but she's <laughs> like. Um, Look, I'll be honest. Sometimes I like to go out and catch a finger. <laughs> I'm like, oh man! But uh, yeah, so so she's she's the new one, and uh, and Ian Bag's my uh, so Ian Bag and then Luna. You both saw them both at Ridley. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so All right. I definitely checked them out. Well, hey, it's been a privilege, man. Thank you so much for just kind of giving me the time. Like I said, I definitely wasn't going to hijack you too much. No I know you got a routine and everything. So yeah. uh, great talking with you, and good luck with this next show. All right, brother. Thanks. Right, thanks a lot. Thank you so much for checking out the pod. A very special thanks to my guest, Mr. Mike Green. You can check him out on his website, on his Twitter, and on his Facebook for future show info. Check out the next episode of the Comedy Chatter Podcast with another nationally touring comic and, of course, me, Melvin Williams. Make sure y'all keep listening, subscribing, and supporting. Y'all be good to yourselves and take care of each other. Peace out.